Bonsoir. In this episode, I continue to reveal some secrets on interior design photography. Come and join me. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Amelie and welcome to my Photography Lightroom and Photoshop podcast, episode number 39. Last week, I showed you some of my workflow on shooting and retouching interior design. With a raw file, I took a raw file from a four-star hotel in Paris, the Hotel Ares, and show you the whole process of the retouching. I got a lot of comments and a lot of likes, so apparently it's a topic that people like. So I wanted to continue on that. If you have not checked last week's episode, check it out. It's pretty interesting if you're into this type of photography. This week, I continue to show you uh, some more of that workflow with a, a specific case that you will run into if you take interior design. And that is shooting a room that is too small, even for a wide angle lens, to, to get the whole room right. Let me show you how I do this. Okay, so this week we do another tutorial on internal design. As you know, that's been my main job for the last seven or eight years. Landscape uh, has been mostly a hobby for me, even so I start selling quite some fine prints now. Where I was really making the money was on shooting hotels. And one trouble I ran into when I started shooting hotels, especially in Paris, most of the rooms are very small. It's not like in the United States, you know, everything is tiny in Paris because the square meter is so expensive. So even the most luxury hotels have small rooms. For example, this is a suite taken in the Hotel Saint-Germain-des-Prés, Rue Bonaparte. It's right by the church of Saint-Germain, beautiful area. And it's a very, you know, Saint-Germain style type of hotels. And they have like a little room before the main bedroom, but it's quite small. So, and, and the owner wanted me to take the full photo of, the, of that room. So what I did is that I put my, um, my uh, camera on portrait mode, on portrait uh, orientation, sorry, and I shot manual. I tried to find some values that, uh, so for this one it was 1.3 second at f.0, why f.0 is that I wanted everything to be sharp. And uh, I got a question, by the way, from a guy saying, why don't you shoot at f22 if you want everything to be sharp? Well, I don't do that for two reasons. One, if you shoot usually above f11 or f13, that's called the sweet spot of a lens meaning sometimes you can get some diffraction. Basically, you're gonna get, you can get some, um, some bad effects on the photo. I mean, it's, honestly, it's pretty tiny today, but the main reason why I don't do it is I'm already at 1.3 seconds of exposure time. If I would be at f22, I would have like 10 to 15 seconds of exposure time, and the, sh the shoot, I would get a more downgraded image, and uh, my, you know, if I take like 100 photos, it would take forever. So that's why I shoot Interior design at 8.0, sorry. And so I, I put, this is very important for you to be in manual because if you look at the second photo, it's also at 1.3 second at f, f, at f8 and the third photo also. And basically I'm gonna use the panorama feature of Photoshop to get, so that we are able to see the entire room. So, but as it's raw file, it's very important to retouch them before you merge them. Why? That's a question that I get a lot also. Why do you retouch your photos before doing the merging? Why? Because a raw file has got the good stuff. The raw file has got all the hidden stuff. And there is no better workflow than first getting the best out of your raw file and then going out of Lightroom. Because as soon as you go out of Lightroom, it's not a raw file anymore. It's fixed, it's written in stone and it cannot be changed and you lose information. So to get the best out of a raw file and then merge is the right way to go. At least that's what has worked for me. Other people might think different, but that's the way I rock and roll, baby. So anyway, so let's start off. So the retouching of that photo is pretty simple. It's straightforward. It's what I do most of the time. I'm going to put the shadows. Now I don't go on interior design at plus 100. Sometimes I go like, I'm going to start at like plus 50 on the highlights also like plus 50. Then I'm gonna do the whites and the blacks. So I press the option key and I go to the right. Not that much. I don't wanna, you see, that's one of the reasons why I underexpose this interior design photos is I don't want this lamp to be just a big burn white uh, circle. That's not interesting. It's more interesting to see all the details of the beautiful lamp in Paris, you know? That's why people pay to come to Paris. They want to see all these details. Okay, and then the blacks. The blacks, option key, right. Yeah, something like this. It's a bit, 
it's a bit dark, so I'm gonna make the whole thing a bit, uh, yeah, better exposure. Um, now the white balance is pretty cool. One thing that you can do when you've got white, I like to try this out. You just take uh, the picker here and you go on the white. Mm, I don't like it so much. So um, you know what? It's too much green. So I'm gonna back down a little bit. Yes, maybe warm it up a bit. I mean, it's the white balance on interior design is completely to your taste. Okay, I kind of like that. What's very important also, as we have a row file here, is to take out any noise. There's not much noise in that photo. So when I don't see noise, I put it to 20. So noise plus 20. And um, let's do some sharpening. Let's get the sharpening. It's not a very uh, sharpening around 90. Now what's thing with which is important when you do sharpening also, see how it's very grainy here on the curtains. I don't need that. I only need the contour to be sharpened, the edges. So I'm gonna click the option key and use the masking tool until anything which is a bit flat, like the curtains or the texture on the walls. Yeah, so you won't see the contour. I like that. Okay, so I sharpened only the contour and I took the noise out. Okay, uh, profile, that's very important to enable the profiles correction, especially this was shot with a 1740, which is a very wide angle. Uh, and look at the difference. You know, it's especially, the, it takes out the vignetting. Okay, um, maybe let's add a little tiny bit of clarity. Yeah, just a little bit, like plus 20. Then I take my three photos, once I've retouched one, and that on, can only work if you shot manual, because you've got the exact same exposure. So I can just click on sync, make sure that check all is on and synchronize. And I'm retouching all three photos with the same settings. Then I just have to right click, edit, and merge to panorama in Photoshop. So it's gonna open up Photoshop, uh, and I just click on make sure blend image together is on, auto is perfect, click OK. And it's gonna create a panel with all three photos. So I'm gonna put this on pause for a second. This way it's merged. Now once it's merged and we are in Photoshop, we need to do some other stuff. You see how this is all rounded here and uh, this is rounded, I don't like that. So for this, I'm gonna go into layers, merge layer. Then I'm gonna duplicate the layer in Photoshop and go to this beautiful new filter that's called Adaptive Wide Angle that you can find in Photoshop CS6. And there, look at the magic. See how this is rounded? All I have to do is click here and there's a blue line uh, and then I click here and it's gonna make it straight. Okay, maybe here also. You don't need to do it on all the wooden stuff. See how all this is bended? This is like weird, uh, same thing. And look how it follows along the mirror. Isn't that amazing? Okay, now this, I would like this to be vertical. So I can just right click on it and vertical. And it's gonna make sure this is vertical. I need to do the same thing here. See how it's bended and see how the blue line is following the this furniture here. Okay, same thing, right? Vertical. And now I've got something which is a lot more straight. Maybe we can do one more line here. Okay, and let's do one more here maybe. No, it's not taking, when it's not working, uh, it's not working, let's just do something like this. Okay, maybe here. So we're just getting everything straight, basically. Okay, I kind of like that, so I'm gonna click on okay. And uh, so now I've, I can see the whole, the whole room, before, after, and I don't have distortion. So then I can just take the crop tool, which is here, and uh, let's crop it. So I think I'm gonna crop out the mirror. Let's, no, let's see first like this. Okay, oh, okay, and like this. Okay, I don't mind that. And press enter. Okay, I kind of like that. That's kind of cool. Then check it out before, after. Oh, I might leave the mirror, it's gonna give more space to the room. Okay, then I create an empty layer and I'm gonna stamp I'm pressing the S key for the stamp tool. S is stamped. Then the option key, I'm gonna make it a bit smaller using the option or Alt key and Control key and your mouse that makes it smaller. I'm gonna press Alt on this little furniture here and I'm just gonna duplicate here and I just have to paint now and that's it. Okay, I'm missing something here. So I'm just gonna click here and paint here. Make it smaller, voila, voila. Okay, so now I've got that back. And um, basically, 
that's that and I'm ready to finish now in Lightroom so I'm gonna press command W and I'm gonna click save now it, this is gonna be a huge file it's gonna be like you know 7,000 pixel by 7,000 pixel because it's three photos but I have a very powerful computer I've got an iMac 27 with 32 gigabytes so should work fine I'm back in uh, in Lightroom and now I can see the entire room and I just keep on retouching it in Lightroom what am I gonna do now I'm gonna put some lights back on so for this I'm gonna take the brush tool make sure my exposure is at 0 0.43 and I just want to brighten up just here a little bit okay now that's very important in interior design to brighten up things so I'm gonna make a new brush um, let's see I like to cheat you know and make like let's let's make something a bit brighter here on the wall just to make this wall a bit brighter okay new every time I make a new brush let's make something a bit brighter here and let's increase yeah it's just making it more interesting new brush let's make a little circle here let's make this also a bit brighter so up brighter oh my saturation is also on like I just want to make things a bit brighter here okay new now that's the whole point the whole key point between having a client who says wow and a client who says good is the brush tool believe me after shooting over 120,000 of interior design photo I know what I'm talking about okay so that's I made this brighter and new again now here I like to make a ray of light check this out a little ray of light you know what my flow I put 100 my density at 100 make the brush a bit smaller and I'm gonna brighten up here put my saturation at 21 and make it a bit yeah I want some brightness here okay new again and here some light here maybe add a bit of yellow in that light so there's a bit of contrast a bit of red maybe no okay new want to make one more uh, something like this yeah something like that yeah yes okay check it out before the brush stroke after the brush stroke you, you you bring back life to your interior design photo with brush strokes I can go on forever on brush strokes new make maybe a, a little circle there uh, make it yeah make it a bit like something like that okay um, maybe boost the overall vibrance of the photo to make it a bit more interesting and uh, why don't we make it a bit brighter just slightly brighter and put some vignetting effect onto it at the end you know, to make it more dramatic okay maybe add a bit of contrast okay if you I add contrast I mean the funny thing when you retouch a photo you know you just retouch it and you've got like a, a flow going a feeling going then you go get a coffee and you come back and you go what did I do you know this is the third time I'm retouching that photo and every time I go into complete new direction but that's just how it is you know retouching a photo is in the moment it's the flow right now okay maybe add one more thing you know here I want to add one more glow of light on that wall I think that wall is boring I want to make it more interesting okay that's too much so I'm gonna make this just make it it just gets the texture a bit more out you know we just get the texture a bit more out okay maybe add a bit of more blue or take out more blue make it a bit warmer no okay that's about it so that was the only way I had to take this entire room in one photo now the, the, the way I gave it to the customer was like this I actually cropped that circle so I gave it like this I don't know it's up to you what whatever you think is the best the key point was to show you how you can use how you can make a panorama in a small tiny room and it can make a difference between having the photo or not having the photo okay if you as usual uh, I changed a bit my website which is called photosearch.com to make it clearer the first page here is called now English tutorials and the second one is called tutorial français so that's only French tutorials and that's only English tutorials and on the English tutorials I still have some limited offer going on this is going to change very soon uh, you still get 30% when you purchase my entire training and 30% also when you buy my whole Lightroom for training and Photoshop training this should end next week it's going to be uh, it's going to be just 20% for the packages instead of 30 if you want to see what you have in the package you can just click on the icon and you will see a bit more details of what each course does you know for example the Lightroom package the first course is called Lightroom 4 quick start it's masters the basics of Lightroom 4 in a couple of hours and then basically in this course 
I'm going to take every module of Lightroom and show you how they work, including web module, making uh, slideshows, making books, everything. You learn the whole Lightroom thing. On this one, on Lightroom for retouching, it's only retouching projects. It's six or seven retouching projects with all the raw files. So it's really, I mean, the main key feature of Lightroom, which is retouching. And the third one, it's a travel photo retouching. I went to Venice and brought a lot of photo bags and I show you how I retouch my six or seven best photos. So this is all of Lightroom. This is just retouching, retouching. And the whole thing now is for $21. We're talking six hours of training with over, I would say about 15 raw files for $21. And uh, well, it's about the same concept for the Photoshop training and for all. So I will increase the price a bit more in the future. So take the opportunity to purchase it now. Thank you guys and let's get back to the studio. Okay, so I hope you liked that tutorial. I think using panorama technology to take interior design is very interesting and I hope it inspires you to do the same thing. I want to thank everybody for all the comments and all the like that I got last week. And I ask you again that if you do like this video, please like it and leave a comment. It really helps to boost the views on YouTube and it helps me to grow and be able to reach more people on teaching photography, which is something that I love. So it's just one little click for you and it's a lot for me. Thank you very much guys for being there and I'll see you next week. This week, I'm in Orlando at Photoshop World with Scott Kelby. And if you are in Orlando, come and say hi to me. It will really be a pleasure. Bye-bye and see you next week.